Hello, this is Janila, the person behind Crafty Crochet Castle. And here I have crocheted a little robin bird along with its nest and some eggs. In this video, I'll show you how to crochet the nest and the eggs. I have a video tutorial for the bird and I've shared the link in the description box below. This is a perfect scrap yarn project and I would rate the difficulty of this pattern as intermediate. You can choose to crochet the eggs in blue or an off-white color depending on the bud. So for this set, I'm using Robin here. And for this set, I'm using a little sparrow. I hope you will crochet this along with me. The bird is about four and a half inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the beak and is about two inches tall and the nest measures four inches in diameter. The eggs are about one and a half inches tall. To crochet the nest and the eggs, I'm using worsted weight yarn in two colors, brown for the nest and light blue for the egg. And I'm using a 4.5 mm crochet hook for this. You can choose any yarn as per your preference and use a hook that is one or two sizes smaller than the recommended hook size for your yarn weight. You would also need scissors, yarn needle, stitch markers, and a little bit of polyfill stuffing. The details of these materials are in the description box below. Now let us get started working on the nest. So I'm taking my brown yarn here and for this pattern we'll be starting off with a magic circle. If you find it hard to work with a magic circle you can always do chain 2 and work your round 1 stitches in the second chain from the hook. Now let me show you how to do a magic circle. I'm going to take my yarn and I will wrap it around my two fingers like this and I will cross it over at the point where both the yarn meets. Next I will pinch here, take my two fingers out so that we have a little ring here now i will insert my hook in the ring i will yarn over and bring a loop this yarn is from the skein end now i will take all my fingers out and carefully hold everything in place and i will make sure the loop on the hook is not too loose or not too tight such that our hook can move very freely but it's not too loose as well now i will yarn over from the skein end and i will pull through the loop on the hook so this is our magic circle this ring is adjustable and we'll be working around one stitches around these two strands of yarn over here. So now for round one, I will do a chain one. To do a chain, I'll yarn over and pull through the loop on the hook. So this chain one does not count as a stitch for this round. So now I will do 10 half double crochet inside the ring. To do a half double crochet, I will yarn over, insert my hook inside the ring, yarn over and bring up a loop. So now we have a total of three loops on the hook. I'll yarn over and pull through all three loops at once. This stitch is called as the half double crochet. Now I'll do nine more half double crochets in here so that we have a total of 10 half double crochet for round one. So here I have crocheted 10 half double crochet. You can always turn your stitches to the top and you can count the number of V's to find the total number of stitch. Each V is one stitch. So once when you do your 10 half double crochet, make sure to hold the stitches with one hand and grab the tail in the other and you can start pulling the tail. This will close the magic circle opening. See how the opening is getting closed as we pull it. You can pull it tighter to completely close this opening. And then we can join with a slip stitch on top of the chain one. To do so, I will insert my hook inside the chain. Next, I will yarn over and pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on the hook. So there we have completed round one and we have a little circle here. So for round two, we'll be working on the third loops only. So normally when we are working a stitch, we'll be inserting our hook inside the V, that is these two loops on top over here, and like this. Loop that is near you is the front loop and the loop that is away from you is the back loop. 
and for half double crochet there's another loop at the back that is over here and this is a third loop this round will be working in the third loop only this is the front loop and this is the back loop and this is where we would insert and there is another loop in the back over here this is the third loop so for this nest we'll be working in the third loops only the pattern for round two is chain two this chain two counts as a half double crochet and i will do one half double crochet in the third loop only in the same stitch so here i'm finding my third loop and i will work a half double crochet here so now i will do two half double crochet in the third loop only for every stitch around So this is how our project will begin to look when we work in the third loop and on the back side it looks like this. So I will be repeating this pattern that is two half double crochet in the third loop only for all the stitches and round two will have a total of 20 half double crochet. I will meet you when I'm at the last half double crochet over here. After completing the 20th half double crochet, I'm going to join with a slip stitch on top of the second chain of the initial chain 2 here. And here is the project at the end of round 2. Now let's work on round 3. For round 3, I will do chain 2 and a half double crochet in the same stitch in the third loop only. And I will work a half double crochet in the next stitch in the third loop only. So this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round. The repeat pattern is two half double crochet in the next stitch in the third loop only. Followed by one half double crochet in the next stitch in the third loop only. So I will be repeating this pattern all the way around. And round 3 will have a total of 30 half double crochet. I'll meet you when I'm at the last half double crochet. Now I have completed the last stitch in round 3. After that I will join on top of the initial chain 2 with a slip stitch. And this marks the end of round 3. And once again we have a little circle here. Now for round 4 I will do chain 2. This chain 2 again does count as a half double crochet. Now I will do a half double crochet in the third loop only in the same stitch. And I will do one half double crochet the third loop only in the next two stitches. So now this is going to be the repeat pattern for the remainder stitches here. The repeat pattern is two half double crochet in the third loop only. Followed by one half double crochet in the third loop only in the next two stitches. I'll be repeating this pattern all the way around and I'll meet you when I'm at the last stitch of round four over here. Round four will have a total of 40 half double crochets. After completing 40th half double crochet in the third loop only, I'm going to join with a slip stitch on top of the initial chain 2 over here. And this marks the end of round 4. Now we can put a pause to this project and we can completely close this magic circle opening. So sometimes our magic circle will open up like this and you can see a little hole here. So to prevent this, you, you can pull this tail tight to completely close the opening and turn to the wrong side. Now we can secure this tail with a knot over here and we can weave it in. To do so, I'm going to take a yarn needle and I'm going to thread the tail in it. And we can secure it with a knot over here. But before that, make sure to pull it tight so it's completely shut.
after securing it with a knot we can weave in the tail to weave in the tail i'm going to insert my needle through the loops in the wrong side i'm not going to insert it through the stitch but only the loops so i'm going to insert my needle and grab some loops you can grab any set of loops and you can go in any direction here i'm going to go in around because this project is worked in around if you are working with rows you can go zigzag up to down in any manner as you prefer once when you think you have weaved it in enough in one direction, you can turn your project and this time you can weave it in grabbing a different set of loops. You can do this a few times or once when you think you have weaved in enough, you can take your needle out. Make sure to stretch out the piece so that the project has not lost its shape when we are weaving it in. And then you can trim it off over here. Now our magic circle is completely shut off and we have weaved in the tail as well. Now we can continue working on our project. So turn your project to the right side and let's start working on it. So now for the next two rounds, which is rounds five and six, we'll be following the same pattern. The pattern is chain two and this chain two counts as a half double crochet and then we are going to do a half double crochet in the third loop only in every stitch around since this is a half double crochet we're gonna leave this stitch and we'll begin working on the next stitch This is how the row is going to look like. We'll be working one half double crochet in the third loop only for every stitch around. And when you're at the last half double crochet over here, you can join with a slip stitch on top of the chain two. And that would mark the end of round five. And I'm going to repeat the same pattern one more time that for round six. So I will meet you after I complete round six. So here I have completed round 6 and our nest would have formed a shape. Round 5 and 6 will have a total of 40 half double crochet each. And once when you complete round stitch, we can fasten off over here leaving a long tail. To do so, I'm going to leave a tail and I'm going to trim the yarn here. Next, I'm going to yarn over and pull the tail through the loop on the hook all the way through. And then we can tighten this up. So there we have fastened off our project. And here is our nest. By working on the third loops only, we have this little re details on the nest. Now let's see how to add more details here. We can weave in this tail as well. You can use the same method as we used to weave in the magic circle tail to weave in this tail. Now let us add some twigs to this nest. For that, I'm going to take my brown yarn again. And I'm going to do a slip knot followed by 100 chains. You can do more chains as well. After completing 100 chains here, I'm going to fasten off over here. I'm going to crochet a total of three such strands of 100 chains each. You can crochet like this or you can crochet one single strand with 300 chains. So here I have a total of three strands of 100 chains each. Now let me show you how to add some details to this nest. So I'm going to take one of the strand and I'm going to thread it in a yarn needle. And then we can start sewing it in round six of our nest i'm going to leave it here near the tail and we can weave this tail in later and i'm going to sew it adding some shape like twigs so i'm going to go around on the top of the nest and i'm going to bring the needle through one of the stitch stitches over here Make sure to insert your needle only in between the stitches over here so that these chains can easily come out. And 
and once when we finished in one direction now we can work in the opposite direction like this we do not need to go in a uniform manner you can go in any random manner like you can skip one stitch and you can directly go to the other like this and once when you're at the end you can weave this tail in so now we have formed a little shape details on top of our nest like this it can be in any random manner it does not have to be a uniform one so now i'll finish off this by weaving in this tail here is the details and because we've used this third loop only we have this beautiful texture on the inside of our nest we have this chain like finish on the outside of our project which will also add to this twigs like finish so now i'm going to sew the other two strands of yarn as well And when you're working on the round five stitches you can go from round five to round six to add shape like this and also you can go from round five to round four as well i'm going to continue working like this and i will meet you when i complete adding shape to our nest and this is the completed nest after sewing all the chains. Now let us crochet the eggs. For that I'm taking a light blue yarn and a 4.5 mm crochet hook. I'll start off my pattern by doing a magic circle. And six single crochet inside the ring to do a single crochet i'll insert my hook in the ring yarn over and bring up a loop i have two loops on the hook i'll yarn over and pull through both the loops this stitch is called as the single crochet i'll do five more single crochets here so that we have a total of six single crochet for round one Now we can close the opening and for this pattern we'll be working in rounds and I'm not going to join with a slip stitch at the end of each round. You can use a stitch marker to mark the last stitch of the round. If you do not have a stitch marker you can use a piece of another color yarn as well. By using a stitch marker we can easily identify the last stitch of the round when we are working on a repeat pattern. This would help us to work on the stitch pattern easily without having to count the total number of stitches for each round. Now let's work on round two. For round two, I will do two single crochet in every stitch around. So in my very first stitch over here, I will insert my hook and I will do two single crochet in the same stitch. And I will do two single crochet in every stitch around. Round two will have a total of 12 single crochets. So when I'm at the last stitch over here, I'll remove the stitch marker, crochet the stitches in this stitch. So for this round two, we'll have two single crochets here. And once when you complete the last stitch, you can place the stitch marker back in the last stitch. So there we have completed round two. And again, you can secure this magic circle tail with a knot on the wrong side. So you can pull it tight to close the opening and then secure it with a knot. Here I'm not weaving it in, I'm just going to leave the tail as such because this will be on the inside of the project and this tail will get stuffed in along with polyfill stuffing. For the next 
two rounds which is rounds three and four we'll be following the same pattern which is one single crochet in every stitch around each round will have a total of 12 single crochet And this is round four. From the next round we'll start up closing up this egg so we'll be working a single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease first to do so i'll insert my hook in the next stitch yarn over and bring up a loop now we have two loops on the hook now i'll insert my hook again in the next stitch yarn over and bring up a loop we have a total of three loops on the hook we would have taken two stitches in the bottom now i'll yarn over and pull through all three loops at once this stitch is called as the single crochet decrease or a single crochet two together we have taken two stitches in the bottom and completed it as one stitch now i will do one single crochet in the next two stitches this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round the repeat pattern is a single crochet two together followed by one single crochet in the next two stitches Round 5 will have a total of 9 stitches. At this time we can stuff the egg with some polyester fiber fill. Now let's work on the last round for the egg which is round 6. For this round the repeat pattern is a single crochet 2 together followed by one single crochet in the next stitch. I'll be repeating this pattern 2 more times here and this round will have a total of 6 stitches. Once when we complete working on the repeat pattern, I will join with a slip stitch in the next stitch. To do so, I'll insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop through the stitch and through the loop on the hook. And we can fasten off over here leaving a long tail. We'll use this tail to close the opening so make sure the tail is long enough. Now let's see how to close the opening. To do so, I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to thread the tail in it. Next, I will insert this needle through the front loops of all the stitches re remaining in the last round. So normally when we are working a stitch, we'll insert it inside the V over here. The loop that is near you is the front loop and the loop that is away from you is the back loop. So I'll be inserting it in only the front loop like this and I will do so in all the stitches for this last round. doing that you can grab the tail and pull it tight see how the opening is getting closed and you can secure it with a knot next to the last stitch and here we have closed our opening now let's see how to weave in this tail for an amigurumi so to do so i'm going to insert my needle next to the knot over here and i'm going to insert it through the stuffing And I'm going to pull it out in a random spot. I'm going to take the needle out and I'm going to make sure I have not pulled it too tight and we have not lost shape to our egg. And once when you do that, you can trim it off over here. And now you can add some shape to the egg and there we have crocheted one tiny egg 
make sure to crochet a few more eggs as well. Here is the completed nest and eggs and I hope you enjoy crocheting this along with me. You can also crochet the robin bird and I have another tutorial for it. The link is in the description box below. And you can complete this as a set. I hope you enjoy crocheting this along with me. Please show your support by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.